An introduction to Evernote for IB Extended SA. Evernote is a very simple note-taking application on your computer. There are three different versions. You can have the online version. You can see your notes here. You can have the desktop version. And you can also have a version on your device. So you can have it on your any iOS device. You can have it on an Android device, anything like that. So you can have it on your iPod, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android phone, whatever you're using. Um, the great thing about this product is that it syncs the notes from any device into all of the accounts. So you have one account basically and you can get Evernote for free so you can download it here or create an account and once you've created an account whatever you add as a note to your Evernote notebook once you sync it you can then also ac access that on your online account you can see here 16 seconds ago and you can also access it on any device you have what this means is that your information is stored in the cloud so it's stored on one of Evernote's servers um, the servers are backed up in many different locations and so that means if you lose your device or if you lose your computer or your computer crashes or you drop it in a pond you can still have access to all of your information once you log into your Evernote account. You can also see you can add pages documents, Word documents, Excel files. You can quick look the file or you can double click the file and it will open in Excel or you can drag the file to wherever you want it. So it's all contained within Evernote for you. And you sync it up, then it syncs over to all of your devices. You can see you can access it online. You can access it in the app, the desktop application, and you can also access it on any device that you have. You can see on the left, I'm in the notes section over here. If you come over to your notebooks, you can organize your notes into notebooks. You can see I have my first notebook and my second notebook. You can add more notebooks by clicking this button here and giving it a title. You can see how many notes are in each notebook along the side here as well. The other thing you can do is then make stacks of notebooks. So for example, I want my first and second notebook collected together. If I drag it into it, this is the stack for my first and second notebook. I can rename this my important notebooks. And now I have a stack with those two notebooks branched underneath or I have a separate notebook over here. To use this for research and for an extended essay, what I would suggest is you create a notebook for main topics. So for example, you could have an introduction notebook. You could have a resources notebook. You could have a bibliography. notebook and then what you can do is stack all of these together and call this stack extended essay so now I have two stacks I have a personal stack and I have an extended essay stack inside each stack you then have notebooks Inside the notebooks, then you can add notes. If you're in notebook view, you can add whole notebooks or stacks into the shortcut bar up here on the left. So now you can access them really quickly and easily when you need them. It's a good idea to add tags to your notes so you can help identify where your notes are and help identify notes in the future. So this one might be a resource. Obviously you don't need a resource tag if it's already in the resource notebook. 
So this one might be a quote, and you can add the quote in here. I would create a new note for each piece of information that you're finding. So if you're finding information from a book, I would have all of the notes, uh, all of the information from that book in one note. One good tip for the tags is if you're adding resources into your notebooks and you haven't read them yet, you can tag them, read me, and sync them up. Then you can read them on your device later. So for example, if you sync it, you sync up, you add the resource to your Evernote app, then you sync it onto your device. You can then read that offline on any device anywhere you are. The other thing you could do is take pictures of paper resources that you have and you could annotate on those resources and then you could use the text recognition in the search feature so you can find those things in the future. What else you can do is you can share notebooks. So if you right click, I can share this notebook. I can invite individuals or I can create a public link so anybody with the link can see my notebook. I don't think I would create a public link for research but maybe I would invite individuals so you can add your teacher or your course advisor and they can then view what notes you've been taking. Now here you can set the rights and the privileges for the people that you've added. If you have a full paid account of Evernote, the peop uh, if you share it with somebody, they can also uh, add to the note. But if you just have a regular version and you add somebody, they only have read-only permission. One other great tool that Evernote provide are browser add-ons. So if I go to my browser and I have an article that I'm interested in, that I would like to use for my research. You can see it's very cluttered. It has lots of advertisements and links and all that kind of stuff. If I come up here and click on the Clearly Evernote extension, you can install this, this browser extension into any browser you have. Once I click it, it cuts down the whole website, takes out all of the ads, and it only leaves the text in the article for me. If I come over here, and I click on the Evernote icon, it syncs it up with my Evernote account. So you can see this was clipped into my first notebook. If I come back to my Evernote app and I go to my first notebook and I sync it, you can then see the article is added to my Evernote account, fully stripped down. You can see if there's any images in the article, it also adds that to Evernote. You can see when it was created, when it was updated. You can see the link that the website has come from or that the article has come from. You can add tags, whatever you like. Uh, let's say I don't want this in my first notebook. I can just drag it over into whatever notebook I like. So let's say I want it in my resources. Now this article is in my resources. If I come back to the article, I can also highlight any parts of the article that I find interesting. So now if I go to back to Evernote and I sync that article again, if we look through the article, you can see the highlight sections, highlighted sections appear. It's actually moved it back to my first notebook. I just need to add it back to the resources notebook and you can see the highlights are already in there. This is really good because what this does is this basically clips the whole website for you. So if this website goes down or if it's removed or if the URL is changed, you still have the article, you have the date that you accessed it and you have the original URL to the article.
Everything that I've explained to you today is all available with the free Evernote account. Um, some limitations of the free account is the space. If you click on Evernote up here and you click on, uh, on account information, you can see that you have 60 megabytes of space per month. So it's not going to be a great place to put your a lot of movies or a lot of sound files, but it's going to be great for text and PDFs and all of that kind of stuff. Some advantages if you do go premium, which is $5.50 a month, is you get much more space, you get an increased maximum note size, you can see, you, it says here you can search within PDFs, but you can also search within PDFs in the free version. It has faster text recognition within images, and you can use it offline on any device. Um, I found though that all I need is the free version. I use Evernote every single day for a whole range of purposes. Um, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. So, having your information across all of your devices is one of the really important parts of Evernote. What's, that's one of the things that makes it really powerful. The other thing that makes it really powerful is that you can add anything into a note. So you can see here I have text in a note. Over here I have a PDF in a note. And here I have a picture in a note. You can also add sound recordings, whatever you like. The power then of having all of your documents in one place is that you can search. So I can search for, uh, let's say, test, and I can find every note that has the word test in it. You can also search within PDFs. So if I'm going to search for game, we can see here I have one note, and inside this note, it's highlighted everywhere inside the PDF where it, has had the, where it says the word game. So it's searching inside the PDF for you, which is really powerful. The next step to that is that it has text recognition. So it can search inside pictures for written text. For example, if I search for peanut, you can see here it's found this image and it's recognized the word peanut that has been written. So this is really, really powerful. You can add um, pictures of work that's been written on a board or written in a notebook and you can take a quick photo on your iPhone add it to a notebook and then when you sync it on your computer that image will then appear and you can search within that image which is great. You can also see it has full word processing features so you can totally format the document you can change the color of text, whatever you choose. You can choose the alignment of your text. You can add bullet points into your text. The other, the other cool part is you can add check boxes. So if I highlight this and I click the checkbox, I can tick off the parts that I've completed. You can add tables very easily. I use the horizontal lines a lot. You can add a voice recording, you can add a picture or an attachment. Now, if you click the information over here, you can see the name of the note you can see what notebook it's saved in, you can choose, you can add tags to your note, you can see when it's created and updated, you can add a URL, you can type an address to set a location. If you have location services turned on on your device, it will automatically add the location. You can see if it's been synced or not, this says it needs to be synced. You can see if there's any attachments, you can see the size of the document, how many words and how many characters as well.